When we understand that the Tower of Babel was to represent a sacred mountain with a heaven at the top, new light is shed on Genesis 11.4, which to remind you reads, Come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. When the Bible describes the Tower of Babel as reaching to the heavens, this is often misconstrued as being a reference only to its physical height. The tower would undoubtedly have been the tallest building in the world at that point, but the Babylonians were not attempting to build some kind of structure that would literally reach into outer space. The Bible is simply confirming that it was a temple dedicated to the worship of Nimrod and Semiramis as part of a new satanic religious system. The temple or throne room at the peak of the tower may have been adorned with depictions of the zodiac, but we're talking about a metaphorical heaven rather than a physical one. It was heaven only in as much as it was the mountain where the gods of Nimrod and Semiramis sat. Many lesser ziggurats were built in the area and were given names like Temple of the Foundation of Heaven and Earth, or Temple which links heaven and earth, or Temple of the Stairway to Pure Heaven. And if that phrase made you think of a Led Zeppelin song, you're on the right track, but we'll get to that later. The Tower of Babel is also the origin of a symbol that almost everyone will be familiar with, particularly in the United States. This is called the All-Seeing Eye, and it stems from the idea in Babylon that King Nimrod, from his lofty vantage point in heaven, was keeping a watchful eye over everyone. This would strike a mixture of awe and terror into the citizens. There are a number of variations of this symbol. Sometimes we only get the eye within the triangle. Other times we see it atop a pyramid type structure. Occasionally we just get the eye by itself. It all comes from the same source. But again, we must remember the Prince of Tyre, King of Tyre passage from Ezekiel. Satan intended to create a prince in the form of Nimrod through whom he could work out his plans from behind the scenes. The false religious system that Nimrod and Semiramis would establish to direct worship to themselves would by proxy direct worship to Satan as the hidden hand behind it all. Nimrod was a prince of Tyre, a type of antichrist, who was a mere puppet for the king of Tyre. Therefore, when you see the all-seeing eye, you are not looking at the eye of Nimrod, but the eye of Lucifer or Satan. In everything we look at in this series, we have to remember to keep looking beyond the prince to see the king. Satan uses many vehicles, people, organizations and structures to carry out his plans, but we shouldn't lose sight of the one who is behind them all. If we analyze Genesis 11.4 still further, we can discover more about the tower. Again, it says... Come let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. The first word they say to each other is come, and this establishes a unity between them. There was a coordination in what they were doing. It was carefully planned and considered, and the project was undertaken in the full knowledge of what it represented. When they say come to one another, they are coming together for four things. Number one, to build a city. Number two, to build a religious temple. Number three, to glorify themselves or to establish their name or reputation. And number four, to stop themselves being scattered over the earth. We have already established that the city of Babylon was Nimrod's secular act of defiance against God, a kingdom of man, by man and for man's glory. We have also already seen that the location is especially significant as it was built on or near the location of the Garden of Eden, signifying an attempt to return there to create a new Eden, a new humanistic or satanic paradise separate from God. We have also already established that the tower was a religious temple built in the shape of a sacred mountain from where Nimrod could rule his domain. This brings us to point three, their intention to make a name for themselves. The English translation again partially masks the true meaning of these words. According to Roger Christofferson, the Hebrew text, Let us make a great name, reads, Let us provide our own salvation. In other words, people were attempting to work their way to salvation independently of God. This is the mark of every false religion, the idea that you can provide for or work your way towards glory by your own efforts. Christianity is the only religion whose adherents realize their need for a saviour and their total dependence on him for salvation. 
Fourthly and finally, we also read that they were trying to stop from being scattered over the earth. This may appear to be a harmless desire that we should feel sympathy towards, but remember that God's original command to Adam and Eve, which he had reiterated to Noah after the flood, was to multiply and fill the earth. I believe God at least partly gave this command because spreading and diversifying would militate against what Satan was trying to achieve, unity under his false religious system. When the people chose to come together in one location under one system of governance, that was itself an act of rebellion against God, especially since that location was back at Eden from where man had been expelled. We now need to explore the Babylonian religion of the tower in a little more depth.